It kind of seems like we're going through a mass extinction because we are. Sorta. Of. So today, let's go over the top five reptiles that we as reptile keepers have saved from extinction. My name's Adam. This is Diamond. You're watching Wicked and Swicked Reptiles. Stick around. If you do research on reptiles and you look at the Wikipedia page, it always has this chart on it right here that'll show how endangered it is from extinct to least concern. And a lot of reptiles are moving in the opposite direction of least concern. They're moving into the endangered category, sometimes critically endangered. This is not good be because we don't want them to die out and the wild. That's where they should be. But there are some examples where us as keepers are actually saving them from going extinct by breeding them in captivity, by breeding them in zoos as well. But we're going to concentrate on the ones that us as keepers can help save or already have. And of course, this can be debated. There could be a debate. This is just my opinion of what might go extinct if we don't intervene or what would have gone if we didn't. Okay, let's just get to the list. Number five, crested geckos. Wait, 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 wait. Crested geckos, the animal that you see on every table for 50 or 60 bucks, those animals. Yes, because did you know until 1994, we're talking less than 30 years ago, these animals were thought to be extinct. Now they come from New Caledonia, but a very small part of one of the islands, well, a few of the islands, but a small part, not even the entirety of New Caledonia, which is small enough as it is. That's what she said. And the reason that we thought they were extinct until 1994 is because or the legend goes, so, you know, stories are fun, aren't they? We were looking for them on the wrong island. <laughs> so we're looking for these guys in a place where they're actually not found in the first place, and one of them fell through a research tent in a place they weren't supposed to be. And the researcher was like, aha, I have found an extinct species. But of course, crested geckos are not extinct. There's lots of them. There's 15 of them in this room, probably. There's babies, I don't keep 15, just they're, they're producing. The great news is with crested geckos is there are no more imports. New Caledonia does not import crested geckos anymore, or export them, I should say. They don't export them anymore. So if you have one, it's, 100% sure that it was captive bred. And why wouldn't they be? Why would you ship them when it's so easy to breed the things in the first place? Crested geckos are amazing. They're easy to take care of. They like a cooler temperature. They don't need crazy high basking bulbs. They don't need crazy UVB, although UVB at a lower level is beneficial. Care guide right here if you want to watch it. Just overall, they're one of the most amazing species you could possibly keep. They're one of my favorites. I will always keep crested geckos, but yeah, they're like, if it wasn't for us, they probably would have gone extinct because in their natural habitat, in New Caledonia, we've introduced fire ants. There are pigs that have kind of destroyed most of the habitat, but the fire ants actually prey upon geckos, the babies, the eggs, the actual animals. So if it wasn't like, if we ever need to reintroduce them, we can, which is amazing because there's a good chance in our lifetime, they might not have an endemic species in New Caledonia anymore. Number four, another cool loving species, axolotls. Okay, axolotls are not reptiles, they're amphibians, they're a salamander. They're a very cool salamander that can regenerate limbs if they break off and they are fully aquatic and they have gills and they never come on land, but if they do, they morph out. Like, they're just crazy. They're insane, I don't know why you don't like them. Should I do a video about all the animals that you guys don't like me talking about? Like, you know, why would I? Hit the thumbs up, I'll do it. Now axolotls are from Mexico. They're from two lakes in Mexico. The problem is one of the lakes doesn't exist anymore and the other lake is basically just canals. It's a shell of itself. So there are between 50 and a thousand of these left in the wild. Between 50 and a thousand. So without a shadow of a doubt, if nothing is done and things continue to go the way they are, they will be extinct in the wild by the time you and I die of old age. Hi there, young people. Nice day today. So that's terrible and sad. The great news is they're easy to breed in captivity and we have tons of them. So if we ever had an opportunity to reintroduce them, and I'm not saying it's always a good idea to reintroduce, that's not what this video is about. I'm just saying these animals are on this planet still because of captive breeding. 
because if we didn't have them in captivity, for sure, those 50 to 1,000 are going to disappear. They have their own predators, right? We have African tilapia, Asian carp that have been introduced and they eat these animals as part of their diet, as basically the majority of their diet sometimes. And also things like, well, we just, we destroy waterways and lakes because we're disgusting because we're humans. It's just what we do. Oh, and also they're sold as food. They're part of like an Aztec diet. No, God, please, no. Which is cool. I love the Aztec culture, but like, we don't, you don't need to eat them anymore. There's other stuff now and there's not very many of them. So like maybe just don't eat them for a while and there'll be like a whole bunch left. And then you can eat them like your grandkids can eat them, I guess. It's a weird way to, anyway. But the reason that you'd want them, well, they're not for everybody because they are fully aquatic. They like cooler temperatures. We're talking about like in the high 60s or so. So yeah, because the lakes that they're from or the lake that they're from very rarely gets above 70 degrees. So never keep them in like a reptile room. They're actually in the opposite side of this wall in the coolest part of the house. It's about 67, 66 degrees uh, and sometimes gets down to closer to 63 in their enclosures. So I think they're cool, but we can't really have them in the part of the house where you'd enjoy them because the water would get too warm. So they're not for everybody. There's the care guide right here. It's really old because again, you guys don't watch stuff when I talk about them. But if you wanted an updated care guide, leave it in the comments. I'll make one. Oh, and some of them glow under black lights, which is wild and so cool. Number three, electric blue day geckos or William's eye, right? Uh, Lactodactylus William's eye. There's so many common names. That's the only reason I bring up the Latin name. But the reason that I love these guys is because, well, they're electric blue. They're really easy to care for. And for sure, they're going to go extinct if nothing is done because they are so bougie. They are the pickiest reptiles on earth. They like to live on one type of tree, screw pines, that's it. And on these screw pines, usually you'll find one male and one female. <laughs> so you need a whole bunch of screw pines for a whole bunch of these animals. And the range in Tanzania where they're from is eight square kilometers. So there is a protected range, but I mean, Africa is different than in North America. The protected range, a lot of the times, these trees are still cut down, which is how these animals are collected, by the way. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? You're collecting the animals and shipping them over, so there's less of them to reproduce in the wild in this already crazy small area, and these trees, they will cut down. So you're cutting down these screw pines that take forever to grow, which is the only home for these geckos, so they don't have a habitat either. So even when you take the, the pair that's on that tree, the tree no longer exists for another pair to repopulate. So you're taking away their home and the home of future generations and the actual animals that would reproduce and make the future generations. This is a big problem. Now there isn't an estimate of how many are left in the wild. The last estimate was done, I think in 2009 and it was like 15,000 or so. I, I forget the exact numbers. The reason I don't care is because it was done in 2009 and since then there's been a ton of collection for the pet trade which is the main culprit of their demise uh, people just go in and they'll take them and they ship them away so here's what i'm pleading to you if you want one which i don't understand why you wouldn't they're amazing animals i have one he actually hides a lot but anyway i have one uh, make darn sure that you're getting it from a captive source, the Frank Paynes of the world. Make sure that you're getting it from someone who's actually captive breeding them. If there is even a shadow of a doubt that somebody has them imported, do not buy them. Because if the imported ones are bought, people will bring more in because there's an incentive. It's like buying animals from PetSmart. You're saving an animal. Well, not really, because if you buy one, that tells the purchasing agent, oh, people want these and they'll buy two to replace the one that you just bought. So instead, buy captive, don't buy the imports, and the people that are selling imports, there's no incentive for them to bring them in anymore because no one is buying them. This is a like, okay, that's enough. Now the males are electric blue, the females are not electric blue. They lay a few eggs at a time. They're very, very tiny. They're very, very fast. I love these animals. They're display animals only though. They're not really handleable, which is okay. I absolutely love these animals and I'm really lucky that I get to have one in my collection. Oh, and both the axolotl and the blue day gecko are critically endangered. So we're very close to losing them. Number two, dragon snakes. Okay, okay. They are technically least concern, LC on the chart. So 
I guess it would beg the question. Why would you think that they're going to go extinct? Well, they don't have the biggest range. They are not the easiest things to keep. So in the wild is probably the best place for them, but the writing is on the wall because as humans, we encroach and encroach and encroach on territory that we don't belong in or that is really vital for these animals to be left pristine. And what we're seeing is agricultural pollutants finding their way into the water sources where these animals live because they are kind of, I guess you would call them semi-aquatic. They are on streams and rivers and things like that. They like it a little bit cooler and that's where they're going to breed and live. And that's why it's so difficult to keep them in captivity. We only have a few breeders in captivity. Creatures of Nightshade is a great example. Amazing Care Tips is a breeder, has some available sometimes, but either way, it's really difficult to breed these guys and it's really difficult to keep these guys. And I think that if we don't start now, by the time we decide, oh wow, now they're endangered, it might be too late. So I think it's amazing that we're getting breeding programs in place right now so that we can save them because again, like I said, the writing is on the wall. Anything that, of course, they have a big range in Sumatra, but everywhere else, not so much. And if the agricultural process doesn't change, the pollutants involved are going to work their way in and like everything else, it's gonna to lead to habitat destruction. And then you're going to see a very quick and rapid decline of the species or the numbers, the population of the species. No! Of course, this is a hunch. This is a guess based on what we've seen on other species for the last hundred years or so. So, I mean, feel free to disagree in the comments, but at the end of the day, I think it'd be a great idea to like preserve this animal as much as possible, even if they're not technically endangered right now. Now, the reason they're difficult to keep is, well, cooler temperatures, they like to live near streams, but also like they're frog eaters and tadpole eaters. And most people don't have tadpoles and frogs just on hand to feed. So this could be an issue. This could be an issue. And I don't think it's the best pet for everybody. So I'm not saying, oh, everyone go out and get one. I think most people shouldn't. They're very specialized but they're amazing and I could not talk about them because they look like this. They look like, they're like dragon worms. That's, that's what they should be called, dragon worms. But I guess they're called dragon snakes, so it actually makes way more sense because they're a snake, not a worm. Number one, something we've talked about, but sparingly, Borneo earless monitors. These are tiny dragons. The fact that they don't breathe fire blows me away because that's what they look like. Now, these guys are the only reptile in their family. They're most closely related to things like beaded lizards and Gila monsters, but they don't live anywhere near, right? Beaded monsters and Gila monsters live in the new world. These guys live in the old world, Borneo surrounding area, right? Like that area of the world. And what's really interesting is you'd figure they'd be very venomous because Gila monsters and beaded lizards will pack a wall up. Like if you get bit by one, it's gonna be a bad day. You're not gonna die, right, most likely, but it's gonna suck. These guys, they do have venom glands, but their venom is very weak. So weak. Or that's the research that we've kind of come to, to notice. The thing is with animals like this that are very rarely found or very difficult to find and not really studied or bred much in captivity up until now, we learn things all the time. We thought that monitors only had uh, like the saliva that it was toxic and venom not venomous, but now we know Komodo dragons actually do have a venom, right? So we learn things all the time. And that's something cool about these earless monitors is they're super, well, that's super rare, but they're endangered, right? They are endangered. So I think it's cool that we start to breed them. And there's guys like at Zilla, I noticed that they started to breed them. And there's guys like Mason Barnes that have taken on breeding projects. And it's kind of like, you're doing great work because they're not cheap to buy. And sure, you'll make money if you sell them, but at the end of the day, they are losing their habitat. They're found mostly, almost mostly in urban settings, things like rice paddies and gardens and things like that. So with their natural habitat going away and then might be considered nuisances or pests, you might see a very steady decline as their habitat starts to go away. So it's amazing that we started to breed them now Anyway, this is just a long-winded way to say this is one of the coolest lizards ever, and please don't let them go extinct. The world needs Borneo earless monitors. There you go. Those are the five reptiles that we saved or are saving from extinction, in my opinion. What's your opinion? Are there other animals that would have fit better on the list? Or is this a silly idea? Let me know in the comments section. And what's next week's video gonna be? I take all the video ideas, 
under the comment section. Thanks for hitting like and subscribe. Honestly, it helps so much just to hit those buttons. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You get videos early, you get discounts, you now know about the crazy trip we're doing in like six weeks. I can't even believe it. We're gonna find the craziest reptiles, like bucket list. Anyway, all that and more for as little as $1 a month. This is two, but $1 a month, and that's it. Because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, it means I'll see you next week.